The major accomplishment of Pericles internally was the perfection of Athenian democracy. This system had continued to grow more democratic since the time of Cleisthenes in 508. Now it was completed. At some point, probably during the time of Themistocles, uh, the archons, who were the major officers of, officers of the state, ceased to be elected. Instead, they were drawn strictly by lots. There was a drawing, and the men whose names came up were the archons. Therefore, the only officials who continued to be elected were a committee of ten generals who led the armies. These generals had to be elected because their jobs were too technical to be left to chance. Pericles was responsible for two measures which extended democracy even further. First, he eliminated the last property requirements for holding office. Any Athenian can now be an archon if his name came up. Second, he introduced the practice of paying any person who served in public office. It was important because previously nobody received any public pay. This meant that poor citizens that often had to work could now serve. They could all go into the assembly. This system was perfect democracy because every citizen could hope to hold office and influence the making of policy. If a man was dissatisfied with the way the government was run, all he had to do was go to the next assembly's meeting and say so. If enough citizens agreed with him, they could vote to change things. This meant that a man who could, sp could speak well and persuasively in the assembly often had pre an influence in policy, even if he did not hold any public office proper. Such men were called demagogues, which were called the leaders of the demos. Remember that the demagogue is not an office. Frequently, demagogues were so popular, they might even hold the elective office of general. This is how Pericles became a major leader for 30 years. Many, but not all of those years, he was a general. Pericles is also noted for other accomplishments at Athens. He adopted policies to foster trade and commerce. He supervised the build, rebuilding of Athens after its destruction from the Persian Wars. He was also responsible for the Parthenon and the major buildings associated with, that we associate Athens today. The argument can be made, I think, then, that the ideals and goals of the Greek polis reached its highest realization during the time of Pericles in Athens. Unfortunately, those failings are also most evident in the period. These failings became obvious in the, re in the relations between Athens and her allies in the Delian League. As time went on, other allies pro fell progressively under Athenian influence. All the other cities were much weaker than Athens, and it was difficult for them to resist the policies she, fared, she favored. It was in the nature of the polis everywhere that, that Athens, once put into power, would pursue policies in her own interest rather than the interests of the whole alliance. In a city-state, only the rights and interests of the citizens was considered important. Others had no rights. By the same thinking, other city-states besides your own didn't have any rights either. Thus, if a city-state had the opportunity to dominate and manipulate her neighbor, she would not hesitate to do so. Gradually, therefore, the Athenians came more and more to interfere with the activities of the Delian League members in order to achieve her own ends. Many communities which had not joined the League were attacked and forced to participate in its operations. Usually Athens justified the attack by saying that these cities were benefiting from the wars against Persia without contributing to them. But in some cases, the cities were just absolutely attacked because they were in a favorable position in the Athenian world. Occasionally, a member of the League would try to withdraw from the alliance, and that member would be forced to rejoin. In some of these communities, the Athenians stationed troops and ships to, to prevent new dissatisfaction in the future. Occasionally, they set up new governments with officials friendly to Athens. Some allies were persuaded or coerced into adopting the Athenian system of money and weights and measures, so that they would find it easier to trade with Athens than any other city. In 544, finally, the, Ar the Athenians arbitrarily moved their headquarters of the League from Delos to Athens, where it could be more secured. They insisted that part of the money collected for military purposes should be paid to Athens for guarding the treasury. With, that, with this event, the Delian League ceased to be an alliance and became instead an Athenian empire. The ultimate results of this high-handed Athenian policy in the Delian League was the first the destruction of the Athenian Empire, and in the long run, the destruction of the polis as a main form of government within Greece.